A century ago, it was impossible to think of moving too close to the sun, much less touching it. However, this impossible thought has been transformed into a reality thanks to the Parker Solar Probe, the fastest spacecraft out there. Beyond touching the sun, the Parker Probe has come with a shocking finding from our star. The Earth is at risk from an approaching space hurricane, coronal mass ejections, which could destroy the planet. What are coronal mass ejections and how do they pose a threat to our existence? Is this the first time that the Earth would be hit by a space hurricane, and how devastating can it be? Join us in this video as we uncover the topic. Space hurricane may hit the Earth in 2025. Will we survive? For centuries, humans have predicted the apocalypse. Even scientists have not been left out as they make diverse predictions on when the world would come to an end. However, it seems like scientists might have got it right with their latest prediction. Recently, astronomers uncovered a space hurricane that could destroy the Earth in 2025. We owe this frightening discovery to the Parker Solar Probe. Launched in 2018, the Parker Solar Probe is a $1.5 billion space probe designed to make observations of the outer corona of the Sun. Designed and constructed by the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, the probe is the fastest object ever built. The Parker Solar Probe is named after physicist Eugene Newman Parker, an emeritus professor at the University of Chicago, and it is the first NASA spacecraft named after a living person. Eugene Parker is famous for proposing the concept of the solar wind and was also instrumental in uncovering the mysteries of the physics of the stars. The solar probe is the first spacecraft to explore the fascinating realm of the low solar corona. It operates by approaching within 9.86 solar radii from the center of the sun. It has consistently broken its own records as the fastest man-made object. It has been predicted that by 2024, the spacecraft would attain a top speed of about 430,000 miles per hour. This means the space probe could travel between New York and Tokyo in one minute. Don't be shocked. The spacecraft is super fast. By 2025, it will travel at closest approach as fast as 690,000 kilometers per hour. This projected speed is 0.0064% the speed of light. The speed of the Parker is one of the reasons why it has stumbled upon some unexpected discoveries in a short while. One of the advantages that the Parker has over other space probes is that it can assess the structure and dynamics of the sun's coronal plasma and magnetic field. Furthermore, this billion-dollar spacecraft can assess the energy flows that heat the solar corona and impel the solar wind. It doesn't stop here. It further evaluates the mechanisms that accelerate the energetic particles. We would agree that it is one hell of a spacecraft, and NASA deserves all the credit for developing such ingenious space equipment. The question on people's minds is this. How is the Parker Solar Probe able to travel into the low solar corona without being hurt? Scientists had this question in mind when designing the Parker, so they ensured that its systems were protected from the extreme heat and radiation from the sun by a solar shield. Without the solar shield, Parker's systems would have been destroyed by incident solar radiation from the sun's perihelion, which is approximately 650 kilowatts per meter square. When we examine this solar radiation further, we will discover that it is 475 times the intensity at the Earth's orbit. A glimpse of the solar shield would reveal that it is hexagonal and that it is mounted on the sun-facing side of the spacecraft. The shield has a diameter of 2.3 meters and a thickness of 11.4 centimeters. The solar shield is characterized by two panels of reinforced carbon composite with a lightweight 4.5-inch thick carbon foam core. This core is designed to withstand temperatures outside the spacecraft of about 1,370 degrees Celsius. The solar shield, which can be described as the Parker's bulletproof, 
weighs only 73 kilograms, and ensures that the probe's instruments are kept at a temperature of 29 degrees Celsius. Since we just mentioned the word instruments, it is essential to point out that the Parker Solar Probe has four main instruments. The instruments include fields, which is for electromagnetic fields investigation, ISOIS, which is used for integrated science investigation of the sun, WISPER, which is used as the wide field imager for the solar probe, and SWEEP, which is used for investigating solar winds, electrons, alphas, and protons. When NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe into space, its specific goals ranged from tracing the flow of energy that heats the solar corona to determining the structure and dynamics of the plasma and magnetic fields at the sources of the solar wind. Since it left our planet for space in August 2018, the Parker Solar Probe has led to the discovery of some spectacular findings, some of which have given scientists the chills. From observing magnetic switchbacks to finding evidence of a cosmic free dust zone of 3.5 million miles radius from the Sun, the Parker Probe has presented us with discoveries that might threaten the existence of our planet. One of the early findings that the Parker Probe brought to our notice is the magnetic flashbacks, which are the sudden reversals in the solar wind's magnetic field. Speaking of solar wind, it is referred to as a stream of charged particles that are released from the upper atmosphere of the sun, called the corona. The solar wind's plasma mostly consists of electrons, protons, and alpha particles with kinetic energy between 0.5 and 10 kilo electron volt. The solar wind's particles can escape from the sun's gravity due to their high energy, which is also a product of the high temperature of the corona. As the spacecraft approached the sun, it noticed the strange flips in the magnetic field. If the spaceship were human, the hairs on his or her skin would have stood upright at this point. This is because it had stumbled upon a mind-blowing discovery. When the spacecraft probed further, it found out that these flips or switchbacks were aligned to magnetic funnels in the solar surface. A closer observation of these funnels revealed that they emerged from between structures known as supergranules. These supergranules are giant bubbles on the sun in which hot plasma from the solar interior rises, then spreads out across the surface and cools before sinking back down. The Parker has presented us with a front row view to understand the sun better. This is because we can trace a straight line between these funnels and why the corona of the sun is hotter than its surface. Another observation from the Parker Solar Probe that surprised scientists is that the corona is wrinkly. Contrary to what scientists expected, the corona isn't shaped like a smooth ball. Instead, it is characterized by spikes and valleys that wrinkle the surface. On further observation of the data obtained by Parker, we found out that these spikes and valleys are coronal streamers. The streamers can be described as giant plumes of solar material rising through the sun's atmosphere. In addition, we have been made to know that more energetic particles fly off the sun than we predicted. NASA was shocked to find out that particles are being flung off the surface of the sun at exceptional speeds. The reason we were unaware of this occurrence for a long time is that we rarely get such particles on Earth. Thanks to the Parker Solar Probe instruments for helping us uncover these particles, their different types, and the circuitous routes they take. If there is one thing that the Parker Probe deserves immense credit for, then it is increasing our understanding of coronal mass ejections. A coronal mass ejection, CME, is a consequential ejection of magnetic field and accompanying plasma from the sun's corona into the heliosphere. One way of detecting CMEs is that they are often associated with solar flares and other forms of solar activity. However, the eeriest part of these mass ejections is that if they ever get to interplanetary space, they could threaten the Earth. Once a CME enters interplanetary space, it becomes known as Interplanetary Coronal Mass Ejection, ICME. If this ICME were to reach and collide with the Earth's magnetosphere, it could cause geomagnetic storms, aurorae, and in some rare instances, 
it could damage electrical grids. By now, it is clear how dangerous coronal mass ejections can be and why we should be scared of them. But guess what? The Parker Solar Probe has flown through a few coronal mass ejections. For instance, on September 5, 2022, the Parker Probe flew through one of the most powerful coronal mass ejections ever recorded. This feat is considered an engineering milestone. Furthermore, it signaled the dawn of a new frontier in astronomy. The Parker's journey through the CME has improved our understanding of how the mass ejections intertwine with interplanetary dust to affect space weather predictions. We must have a proper understanding of how CME affects space weather. If not, we will be cut unaware by its after effects, such as the breakdown of satellites and the disruption of communication and navigation technologies. As scary as this possibility might sound, scientists have uncovered something more chilling that we should be more worried about. Before we talk about this impending doom, it's only fair that we explore what the probe could discover in the convection and radiation zones of stars like the Sun. The convection zone, or convective region of a star, is the unstable layer due to convection. Here, the energy is primarily or partially transported by convection. When we talk about stellar convection, it refers to the mass movement of plasma within the star. It usually forms a circular convection current with the heated plasma ascending and the cooler plasma descending. In contrast, the radiation zone or radiative region is the layer of a star's interior where energy is primarily transported toward the exterior through radiative diffusion and thermal conduction. In this zone, energy travels using electromagnetic radiation as photons. The matter in the radiative zone is so dense that photons can only travel a short distance before they are absorbed or scattered by another particle. During this process, the photons gradually shift to longer wavelengths. Thus, it takes an average of 171,000 years for gas rays from the sun's core to leave the radiation zone. While scientists have been focused on the anomalies that could be found in the sun, they haven't lost sight of the possible anomalies in nearby stars. The closest star to the Sun is Proxima Centauri. It is a small, low-mass star located 4.2465 light-years away from the Sun. It is situated in the southern constellation of Centaurus. Discovered in 1915 by Robert Innes, Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star that has a mass of about 12.5% of the Sun's mass. This star has an average density of about 33 times that of the Sun. The Proxima Centauri's proximity to the Earth is why its angular diameter can be measured directly, and its actual diameter is about one-seventh the diameter of the Sun. One of the anomalies that has been discovered about Proxima Centauri is that it emits intense electromagnetic radiation that could strip the Earth of its atmosphere. If nothing is done to protect our planet's atmosphere from these intense radiation, then it means that our atmosphere is at risk. The damages caused to our atmosphere would lead to adverse weather and climatic conditions, and possibly diseases such as cancer. Another nearby star of our planet is Sirius. It is the brightest star in the night sky, and it is almost twice as bright as Canopus, the second brightest star. We can attribute Sirius's brightness to its intrinsic luminosity and proximity to the solar system. More so, Sirius A is almost twice as massive as the Sun, and it is 25 times as luminous as the Sun. It is a two-star system consisting of a main-sequence star called Sirius A and a white dwarf star known as Sirius B. This Sirius B is the closest white dwarf star to the Earth. More so, white dwarf stars are the core remains of stars that have exhausted their fuel and shed their outer layers. If we ignore these nearby stars for a moment, we would be about to notice the elephant in the room. There is a hurricane from space on its way to our planet, and if we fold our arms without doing anything, the Earth would be destroyed by 2025. This is the chilling revelation that scientists got from their recent observations of space. We owe this news to the high-grade instruments of the Parker Solar Probe, 
as they have helped us predict the impending geomagnetic solar storm. Geomagnetic storms are in no way a friendly spatial event. A geomagnetic or magnetic storm is the temporary disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere due to a solar wind shock wave. In most cases, the disturbance that drives the magnetic storm is often a solar coronal mass ejection, CME. This further proves why we should be wary of CMEs. Geomagnetic storms are responsible for several space weather phenomena, such as solar energetic particle, SEP events, geomagnetically induced currents, GIC, and ionospheric storms. Furthermore, the disturbances can cause radio and radar scintillation, navigation disruption by magnetic compass, and auroral displays at much lower latitudes than usual. This sounds scary, right? Now, you would agree that we shouldn't take this warning about an oncoming space hurricane for granted. If this approaching space storm happens in 2025, our planet would suddenly become an unpleasant place to live in. This is because it would lead to global power cuts, communication blackouts, and loss of trillions of dollars, which would persist until something is done. But how do we remedy such a situation when the whole world is thrown into darkness? If billions of tons of magnetically charged matter were to hit our solar system, it would lead to the total damage of all satellites. Besides the shutdown in communication, the militaries would be left blind as their satellite have been rendered useless. Similarly, the supercharged magnetic particles would destroy the national grid of every country in the world. Electronics would not be left out in this doom as they would all shut down. Thus, our once global village would become extinct as people cannot communicate. Imagine watching a movie on Netflix with a loved one in your living room and the television just switches off without warning. And the same thing happens to your mobile phone and other electronic gadgets. The lights in your home go out at once. The same thing happens in the entire neighborhood. That is an ugly situation, right? Now, imagine this scenario for the rest of the country and the world. We can already guess what would happen. Anarchy is bound to set in as there would be burglaries of homes and offices and mass looting of public utilities and businesses. Thieves would have a field day because security will become weak. The electronic security system of residential and commercial buildings would have stopped working due to the space storm. Moreover, we can't count on the police and other law enforcement agents cause they would also be grappling with the communication shutdown and power outages across the globe. As much as this event seems unusually scary, we have experienced a sneak peek of it in the past. This is not the first time our planet will be affected by a geomagnetic storm. We have been hit by more than our fair share of space storms in the past. The most memorable one is the Carrington event of 1859. The world would not forget this 19th century event quickly because it caused the shutdown of parts of the recently created U.S. telegraph network, started fires, and electrically shocked telegraph operators. Named after British astronomer Richard Christopher Carrington, this event occurred between the 1st and 2nd of September 1859. So far, it is the most intense geomagnetic storm recorded in history. The Carrington is unforgettable because it created such strong auroral displays that were reportedly seen worldwide. As we are probably thinking already, scientists have confirmed that this geomagnetic storm was most likely caused by a coronal mass ejection from the sun colliding with our planet's magnetosphere. The culprit CME responsible for this event is believed to have traveled directly towards the Earth. The coronal mass ejection undertook the 150 million kilometers journey in 17.6 hours. This was unusual because it typically takes CMEs several days to arrive at Earth. Scientists believe that the fast speed of this CME can be likely traced to a prior CME. One of the impacts of the geomagnetic storm on the Earth is that auroras were seen globally in both the northern and southern hemispheres. For instance, the aurora that spread over the Rocky Mountains of the United States was so intense that it woke gold miners up in the middle of the night. The poor men thought that it was already morning and began to prepare for breakfast. It was that bright. While people could read the newspaper and their books thanks to the aurora's light, 
the geomagnetic storm was simultaneously causing unforeseen havoc. The storm's geomagnetic-induced current led to the failure of telegraph systems across North America and Europe. It didn't stop here as telegraph pylons threw sparks. Some telegraphs were unlucky as they suffered electric shocks due to the event. The Carrington event is not the only evidence we have of the severity of geomagnetic storms. We have had less severe storms, such as the Aurora of 1882 and the geomagnetic storm of 1921. Let's take the November 7, 1882 Aurora for an example. It occurred during an extended period of strong geomagnetic activity in Solar Cycle 12. It was responsible for the bright auroral observations across the world. Furthermore, it led to damages such as electrical fires and global telegraph communication blackouts. Similarly, the three-day May 1921 geomagnetic storm caused severe damage to overhead and underwater telegraph equipment. The storm led to electric fires in many places globally, such as the one near Grand Central Terminal in New York. Also known as the New York Railroad Storm, it is considered the most intense geomagnetic storm of the 20th century. It was created by the impact of an extremely powerful coronal mass ejection on the planet's magnetosphere. The most recent severe geomagnetic storm we have experienced occurred in March 1989, as it had struck the Earth on the 13th of the month. Unlike its predecessors, which shut down telegraph lines, this storm caused a nine-hour power outage of Quebec's electricity transmission system. Residents of Quebec, Canada, were thrown into darkness for over nine hours as the rest of the world faced communication blackouts. Reminiscing on these past geomagnetic storms would help us consider the impending danger. The predicted geomagnetic storm is as powerful, if not more significant, than the one that caused the Carrington event. Furthermore, it is bound to be more dangerous than the Carrington event. Unlike the 19th century when telegraph lines were used, we now employ more sophisticated communication systems and power grids. Scientists say that if the Carrington event were to occur today, it would be more damaging than the one of 1859 because global communication shut down and power outage would occur. Isn't this enough reason for us to be afraid of the predicted 2025 geomagnetic storm? It's only fitting that we start making plans to protect ourselves from the effects of this event. This is because, from the look of things, there is nothing scientists can do to stop this storm from happening in the predicted year. So, we should develop strategies that would keep mankind safe when it does happen. Nevertheless, we never can tell what NASA might be cooking. It might have found a way to keep the geomagnetic storm from damaging our planet and have chosen to keep it a secret. Let's hope that this is the case. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.